here behind me, this is the Lizzie Borden house. It was here inside this house that on August 4th, 1892, Andrew Borden and his wife, Abby, were brutally murdered, allegedly with an ax. Andrew's daughter, Lizzie, was tried for the murders, but was acquitted and the case remains unsolved. It is now a bed and breakfast. And we're going to stay inside in the room where her stepmother was murdered. Not only did two horrific murders happen inside, but Andrew and Abby are reported to haunt the house to this very day. Reading people's experiences about staying here, anything could happen. It could be like a super chill, nothing happened kind of night, or we could hear all kinds of stuff, hear things, see things. There's all kinds of reports about ghostly activity. So let's, let's find out together. Here we go. We are standing in the Lizzie Borden house. And I thought it was gonna be unsettling, but it feels fine in here. It's, it's a lovely house. It's just like beautiful and so, feels very accurate to the period. This is the couch that Andrew Borden, well, not the couch, but the spot that the couch was at. Conveniently left some axes for you to use as props, I guess. How does it feel to be sitting in the place where an ax murder happened. Okay, so far. <laughs> you ready to go check out our room? Sure. This is the John Morse room. It was actually a guest room. It's called the John Morse room because Lizzie's uncle, John Morse, visited, I think the night before the murder? Mysteriously, no one really knows what he was doing in town, but this is where he slept. And the next morning, it is where Abby, Lizzie's stepmother, was murdered. Don't know how I feel about staying in a room where someone was murdered, but there's a first time for everything, right? Right here is where her body was found. They leave a nice picture so that you can know exactly where it was. Well, there is one thing we have to do when we're staying overnight somewhere, even if it's in a spooky haunted antique place, and that's a bed test. <laughs> we'll go a little gentler on this one. Yeah, we're not gonna go too crazy. This is clearly an antique bed, but um, feels pretty good, it'll do. Don't know how much sleep we'll get in it, but it's a nice bed. The tour guide who was in the house uh, finishing up a tour when we checked in was saying that there's been a lot of activity lately because of all of the changes and that things have been a little bit chaotic just because they're transitioning. Tells me two things. One, if you're staying here, make sure you're nice to the staff. They're going through a transition and it sounds like it's a little bit of a rough time for them. So be patient and nice to them because they're doing their best. And two, we're probably gonna have a fun night. You feeling spooky yet? No, not yet really. No, I know. It's actually just like a really nice old yeah, house. Yeah, just like a nice old house. <laughs> and the room we're staying in has an actual dress used in the movie, The Legend of Lizzie Borden. It is weird that like no one stays here overnight with you. There are other guests here tonight, but that like we're just kind of hanging out on our own. Except the actual rooms that people are staying in, like you can pretty much wander the house as you please. We're thirsty, so we're getting some water. For you? This way. Yeah. Okay. Like that. But yeah, super neat that it's like an old 
ice chest? Is that what you would call this? What would you call this? I guess so, yeah. Like an old, it's like the old refrigerator. I don't know. People in my family have these, but they use them for like regular cupboards and entertainment centers and stuff. It's so peaceful here that like every little noise you hear, and it's, there's, you know, we're not the only ones staying here yeah. tonight. So it's hard to tell if it's just like a noise, if it's someone else. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. It's really interesting to actually be in this house. It's a really, really lovely, nice house, but it at the time wasn't like the fanciest. And Andrew Borden, Lizzie's dad, was very well off. Um, I think when he died, his assets were somewhere like $9 million in today's money. However, this house is uh, closer to the downtown area and not up on the hill where some of the more well-off families were. Plus, this house did not have indoor plumbing, which was pretty common at the time. The bathrooms that the house currently has have been converted from dressing rooms or bedrooms. I think some of the backstory is that there were a lot of tensions with uh, Lizzie and her father and her stepmother. You can definitely get this vibe of like the kind of like the separation like Lizzie and Emma their side of the house is like shut off and has its own separate staircase from Andrew and Abby's room. This is the front entryway. This is the front door. This is the staircase that leads up to Lizzie and Emma's side of the house and the guest room and then all the way back through the kitchen is where the other side of the staircase is. So way over on the other side, like this is the side entrance. And this is the staircase that Andrew and Abby would have used to get to their room. These are Lizzie and Emma's connected rooms. You can see the door that connects to Andrew and Abby's room, but I think they kept it locked and I believe Lizzie even had her bed blocking the door. I feel like actually physically being here, you can really get that sense of like the separation between the two sides of the families. Lizzie Borden was acquitted, but there's a lot of, I don't know, kind of tenuous evidence that she probably did do it. Yeah, one of the really odd pieces of the whole case is that John Morse, who was Lizzie and Emma's uncle, he was someone that didn't really come around a lot. However, the night before the murders, he came and slept overnight. The morning of the murders, he and Andrew Borden had a conversation. I think it took place here in the sitting room. I think this is the sitting room. Seems like a, a parlor, right? He left before 9 a.m. to go buy oxen which is a very 1890s thing to do. <laughs> so he leaves and somewhere in the time frame of I think like 9.30 and 11 a.m. Abby, Lizzie and Emma's stepmother goes upstairs to make the bed and it is in that time frame that she is bludgeoned and I think that she was struck 17 times, which is a lot. So Andrew was also out of the house at the time that that happened. And their maid, their live-in maid, provided testimony saying that he got himself locked out and when he, she came to let him in, that she heard Lizzie laughing at the top of the stairs. Which is quite interesting when you consider the fact that as you walk up the stairs, you can see a clear shot under the bed. You get a view of what would have been Abby's body. So it just is all very weird. Like there are all of these little things that just don't quite add up. And there's also a lot of stuff that seems very suspicious and doesn't look so good for Lizzie. But I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll ever know. I don't like that. I don't like that this house makes noises and I don't know what they are. You chose to come here. You I picked did, it. I did. But that's because I love the idea of spooky things and not actually experiencing them firsthand. One thing's for sure. You can take a tour of the house, but on a tour, you don't just to, just to get to like wander around like 
we are now. Why is there stuff moving behind me? Stop. It's upstairs. Okay. Okay. That's okay then. That's the acceptable kind of moving around. <laughs> One thing that I definitely did not know would be cool, that is really cool, is all of the little touches. Like these are pieces of plates that they found in the outhouse. And this one right here matches the description of testimony of John Morse of um, dinnerware that they had. So that's, that's pretty cool. Also, in this other case down here, they have replicas of the skulls that they actually, like they used the actual skulls of Andrew and Abby Borden in the trial. And it's interesting that they have the pictures and replicas of them here. They even have a, a Borden family Bible. So neat. It's just really neat to see like all the photos and just, it gives you such an appreciation for the house and just the, the history of it. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but also pretty interesting. As I'm editing this, I'm hearing all kinds of weird noises in the background. Uh, and I have no idea if it's other guests or something else, but I definitely am hearing like little squeaking noises. There's a point where Jeremy's talking where it sounds like there's a child's voice like underneath it. Yeah, it's kind of... I don't know. It's it's all very weird. There's there's more stuff. So just just keep watching. There's there's more things that I am unpacking here. This room smells so fragrant. Every time. Every time. Gorgeous view of the sunset and a view of the street, which is actually a fairly busy street. <laughs> I really do love all of the little touches. When we first got here, I was like, why is there a camera in the room? And then after looking at this photo, I realized you can see the camera in the mirror. So they have an almost identical bedroom set to what was in the house at the time of the murder. But then they also have a camera, just like in the photo. We have been sitting downstairs for the last few hours. Not a whole lot has happened. We did make friends with some of the other people staying here tonight and kind of just conversing. We're all gathered in this room, the room that Andrew was murdered in. And when we were talking about Andrew, somebody had an EMF detector on the couch and it kept going off. And then, um, one of the, uh, the people that we made friends with, he came downstairs and got me and brought me upstairs into their room because they had an EMF detector sitting in a chair with some stuffed animals and it was like bouncing around doing all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, that's weird. I mean, we're far away from the electrical current. Definitely some, some stuff going on. What? I think they did this on purpose. They put this dress here so that you would be startled every time you come into this room. Everyone went to bed, so we decided we would just sit here in silence and see what happens. If you have something to say, you can say it right here. We'll be able to hear you. weird, right? What was that? That was my phone vibrating in my pocket. Hi, future Kara again. Um, so there's a, a couple minor things going on uh, here, but one thing is really interesting is it sounds like there's like a creaking and then it sounds like there's shuffling in the room and what sounds like a voice and at the time that this is happening, we are not acknowledging anything. Like, we are not hearing anything of that's happening. It's weird, right? Especially, like, do you guys hear that? Do you guys hear 
what sounds like a man's voice. It sounds like it's like two syllables, like <sighs> I'm sufficiently spooked out right now myself and you guys haven't even seen how the rest of our night goes. Oh, that scared me. But it was just the motion sensor going back off. It's interesting that the one in the other room is still on though. Mm -hmm. All right. Feels very quiet, quiet right now. So I guess it's time for us to mosey on upstairs. I'm about to sleep right next to where a murder most foul happened. <sighs> Wish us luck. Well, this was all fun until it came time to turn out the lights and sleep next to the spot where Abby Bor Borden was murdered. <sighs> All right. Good night. Do you hear that? Oh my goodness. I was just about to fall asleep and I heard what sounded like footsteps coming up the stairs like a boot, like step. Step, step. And then I thought I heard whispering and I'm just like, what the heck guys, what is going on? I don't like this. I don't think we're gonna get much sleep. Well, at least I'm not. I think Jeremy's actively sleeping right now. Do you see that in the background right there? That is the dress unsettling in the night. <laughs> Hello? I don't like it. I finally got a couple hours of sleep. But then I got woken up by what I thought was a doorbell. I don't even think this place has a doorbell. It might have been a key on the piano downstairs. I'm not sure. Well, that's interesting. That was sitting there on the chair with the pillow. Because it was warm in our room, and I took the blanket off and set it there. <laughs> oh boy. We have certainly had a night. At least I have. Jeremy's still sleeping. And has been for a good portion of when I was awake. We get to do a breakfast um, this morning with other people that also stayed the night, so I'm interested to see if they had any experiences. I can't sleep for Jeremy. Sleep for Jeremy? Speak for Jeremy. But I heard a lot of things last night. And he did confirm there was a weird noise in the room. And I was like, you heard that right? And he was like, yes. And I said that was in the room, right? And he said, Yes. So there's that. <sighs> All right, let's go get some breakfast and see what the other people have to say about their evening. Breakfast was great. It was, uh, I think, things that, like what you would eat back in the late 1800s. So we had Johnny Cakes, which I think are, I don't know, they tasted like cornbread, but in pancake form. They're pretty good. So that was nice. Sadly, it's time for us to wrap up and pack out. However, it was interesting because I had a rough night. Jeremy slept through a lot of it, but I had a rough night. And going downstairs and talking with other people, um, I was not alone. Like it kind of sounded like we all had very 
some similar experiences, some different experiences, but it all happened around like three to 4 a.m. So it was really interesting that all of this different stuff was happening around the same time. And like one party said that they heard like, I think it was even the people above us said that they heard like people partying outside, which we didn't hear that or what they thought sounded like that. Um, there was a couple who have a service dog with them and the service dog woke her up in the middle of the night because he was growling at something. So um, just all kinds of like strange experiences. We have spent the last like what, 11 months, like not peopling. And I just feel like staying here kind of like we made friends and like acquaintances and kind of like had this communal experience that has been missing from our lives for a long time. So it was really, really nice experience. I didn't get much sleep, but that's okay. <laughs> we're gonna go take a tour now. So we do get to see a couple of the rooms that we haven't seen yet because people were staying in them, uh, checked in when we got here last night. So we're gonna go do that. Our tour guide, Louise, was great. That was an excellent tour. I learned so much about the case that I never knew. And we got to see cool places like the creepy basement, which was quite creepy. I'm so glad we stayed here. Like learned things on the tour this morning that kind of like reinforced the weird things that I experienced and other people also experienced. Um, so yeah, definitely come check this place out uh, if, if you're up for it. Before leaving town, we drove past Maplecroft, the house on the hill that Lizzie Borden purchased with her inheritance after her father died. We also visited the Oak Grove Cemetery where Lizzie, or Lizbeth as she later changed her name to, and the entire family, they're all buried here, including Lizzie and Emma's biological mother. We also attempted to visit the Fall River Historical Society because our tour guide told us that they have a Lizzie Borden collection that even includes Abby Borden's hairpiece and some forensic evidence from the trial. Sadly, it was closed the day we went, but if you have the chance, you should check it out and let us know what we missed out on. We have plenty more to see in Massachusetts, including checking out Salem, so make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you soon.